how have you pushed the envelope this time? Uh, we haven't pushed it. We've licked it this time. I'm, uh, so we're we're reaching, trying. You know, I mean, each film, everybody sets a new bar. What we do, you know, Jim Cameron does, and then Spielberg does it, and and they each raise the bar each time. So it's a it's a healthy competition. Um, but I guess the best thing is is that audience benefit from it the most. You know, we're still all kind of struggling with the technology, trying to get it to do the things that we want to do in a very photorealistic way. But we're getting to a point where, you know, we can start getting back to the characters and, and the storyline, you know, and not deal with the technology. It's just a tool. It's only there to help you make uh, things that are amazing, you know, that a writer can come up with now we have the tools to be able to do almost anything but you know we're still not there yet but it's it's each year is a you know there's a new, new benchmark that's hit by everyone out there who's working in the digital realm that means we shot with no film whatsoever we captured every image with a digital camera uh, that encoded that image digitally uh, and and that really made the process for us because we're a very special effects laden film much easier because we have absolutely total control of every frame we have about 2,200 shots in the movie and every one of them has a digital effect in it. So that process of shooting digitally did two things. It made the process of us working uh, much more efficient, much cheaper, and much easier to work in. It gave us absolute, total, unequivocal control over every frame, every pixel within every frame. But most importantly, the real reason behind it was is we wanted to be able to capture an image digitally, have total control over it, and get it into a theater and show it to an audience exactly the way in which we made it. Not just the color imagery, but the sound itself. And, um, you know, that's the most difficult thing to do when you're a filmmaker. It's the most heartbreaking, painful, and even humiliating experience to, to spend three or four years on a movie, spend $100 million, and then you go to a local multiplex, um, and the film is running at half the luminance. It's scratched. It's dirty. It's out of focus. There's a lot of weave. It's terribly depressing. So that's one of the big things that we're trying to push. I mean, it's not part of our core business, uh, but it's something that we're very interested in. Returning back to the point where people can actually see a quality presentation in a theater. No, we'd have none. All we can do is these are the first nascent steps of trying to educate the audience, empower them, with the belief um, that they do make a difference, that if they do become vocal, they do go to their theater owners and demand to have better presentation, a better environment in which to see movies. If we don't do that, we're gonna start to lose our audience because the average person can see a movie on a DVD in their home, in a television set, and hear it and see it, and it more closely resembles what we made than they can in 99% of the theaters. That is tragic. Nothing can ever eliminate or should ever replace this extraordinary, sublime experience of what it's like to go to a movie theater and see a, a movie with a bunch of strangers. It's an adventure in itself. And the problem is, is we're being run by corporate entities now. Corporations own the studios, corporations own the multi multiplexes and the theaters in this country. And they don't have any respect whatsoever for the audience. And even worst of all, they don't think that anybody cares enough to actually make a scene about it. And we've got to hope that this is just the beginning. Where, because it, it, the issue isn't about a filmmaker should have a choice. He should be able to acquire his images on film if he wants to or digitally. Now he's got a choice. But it is an irrefutable fact that he's got to be able to, if he's made it, his movie on film, transfer it to a digital format where it can be seen exactly the way he made it over and over and over again without any degradation of the image. That's a very important thing. I mean, we can send a vehicle to Mars and, you know, trying to see a movie in focus is almost impossible. Tom Cruise makes a lot of money making a movie. It costs just as much as to create Yoda, believe me. It's much better and easier. Um, the only thing is, is the great thing about Yoda, he doesn't ask for a bigger trailer. You know, he doesn't have a lot of assistance. Um, you know, he always shows up to work every time we want him. Um, but, you know, no, that will never happen. It's about, for our world, because it's such a science fiction and fantasy world, it's very important for us to be able to create digital characters that seamlessly can interact with live actors um, and do it in a, you know, a fun and interesting and, and entertaining way, but also at the same time to have a performance where there's something really going on between the, the two, you know, the digital character and the live actor. Um, to do that as a human being is ludicrous. I mean, it's... You know, it takes 30 or 40 artists to create a performance like Yoda. Um, you know, I don't want to have to deal with 30 or 40 people. Dealing with one actor is hard enough.